Today we're talking about the USMCA, and I feel like a parent whose kid is about to go off to college. I covered this guy growing up from Trump saying NAFTA was the worst trade deal ever to its awkward puberty stage where we were in negotiation with Canada over dairy quota policies. And now we're here. Democrats, Trump, Canada, and Mexico have all looked at each other and said, USMCA, you're ready to become ratified. My goal today is to just go over what compromises were just made between the administration and Democrats and go over what the next step is going to be to finally implement this trade agreement. Now, I made this episode pretty quickly because the USMCA is only going to be in the national consciousness for oh, another 5 minutes. Let's get into it. The first resolved issue was something I recently made an entire episode about, enforcement. Having a great trade deal that's not enforceable is like having a Facebook event with hundreds of people clicking attending. Glad everyone thinks it's a good idea, but I wouldn't hold my breath on turnout. Well, we have, don't have the assurances that we need on enforcement. I myself voted for NAFTA. Uh, I had some disappointments, but one of the big disappointments is if you don't have enforcement, you are just having a conversation. The specific concern is that one of the main innovations of this treaty is boosting labor and environmental standards and rights for the Mexican workers. We couldn't beat them on price, so we're dragging them into progressivism. It's great to see that Pelosi's fighting for workers' rights somewhere. Now the democratic worry is that, well, they might not implement those reforms if we don't hold their feet to the fire. Now, it's not like Trump had complete trust in the Mexican government, but instead there were two ways of rectifying this problem. Republicans wanted to work outside the free trade agreement and use tariffs if Mexico didn't do what they agreed to. Which, wow, that's not really in the spirit of a free trade agreement, but it would work. Democrats, on the other hand, were more in the mood for renegotiating this renegotiated trade deal to fix a major enforcement loophole. You see, we ported the enforcement section of this deal directly from NAFTA, and America had perfected getting out of our free trade commitments by not nominating representative to dispute panels. Which meant there was no dispute panel, and then no accountability. Now you might wonder why we didn't fix that in this agreement, and the answer is simple. Here's our trade representative testifying before Congress with that answer. The USMCA and NAFTA before it had a provision that said in certain circumstances a country can opt out of, of the panel decision if they want to. Uh, we did not change that. We left that in place uh, largely because we didn't want to be in a position where someone could challenge U.S. trade laws. Yeah, we're really the ones who distilled the art of evading accountability in trade agreements. We don't want to have to start playing by the rules either. According to The Economist, under NAFTA, countries could block the appointment of arbiters to hear awkward disputes. This should no longer be possible. Alright, so now when we point at them, we're going to have four fingers pointing back at us. So how would that work? Oh, simple. Instead of asking countries, hey, could you send an expert to defend you and then just sitting there on your hands waiting for the phone to ring? Before they sign on, every country would have to submit a list of experts that could be called upon for the panel. Well, that was an easy enough fix. Unfortunately for America's accountability to abuse free trade agreements, though, Reuters reported that Mexico's foreign minister Marcelo Abrand said, under the changes to the USMCA, Mexico would also be able to bring labor complaints against companies and workplaces in the United States. A Canadian source said that the mechanism established with Canada was also reciprocal. Well, it seems like we find ourselves in a bit of a regulatory, dare I say it, Mexican standoff. This isn't the only major edit to this USMCA deal. Second, rather than being innocent until proven guilty, workplaces are now guilty until proven innocent. The new deal shifts the burden of proof regarding such harm. To avoid penalties, defendants will have to show that it did not happen. Now, this would make it a lot easier to investigate Mexican companies and local governments, as rather than having to put in the effort to send investigators to Mexico and potentially be violating their sovereignty, 
we can just sit back and say, hey, proved us that everything is still on the up and up, or we're soon going to legally stop buying your goods. Can you guess who the biggest objector here is? Well, it's the people on the receiving end of all these new regulations. Mexico's saying, hey, Democrats, the old deal was pretty good. We already ratified it. You sure you want to make all these edits? Specifically, a former Mexican USMCA negotiator said, <clears throat> if I'm reading this correctly, now the country defending itself is guilty until proven otherwise. This can become an incentive to block trade. You just gave the US another instrument to impose tariffs and close markets, because it's going to be accusing you of not complying with your labor standards. Yeah, you did read it correctly. It's not great for you guys if America or Canada isn't signing into this agreement with the best of intentions. But don't worry, that does not sound like something America would do. Unfortunately for Mexico though, almost three quarters of their exports go to America. So they kind of have to do what we say regarding trade deals. Despite being the only country to actually have ratified the original USMCA that's being rewritten by Democrats, Mexico's Senate, which approved the USMCA in June, is expected to promptly ratify the amendments. My gosh, Mexico, at least play a little hard to get. Now there was one more massive point of contention with the USMCA. That, well, it's a bit odd for America. One of the things that it does is extend the minimum data protection for biologic drugs. This is going up from eight to 10 years. Yeah, in a real G, how much did Big Pharma pay for this section of the USMCA? Name brand drugs enjoyed patent protection from generic drugs in the United States, Canada, and Mexico for a minimum of 10 years. Generic drugs are basically the competition that enters the market once a patent expires and drive down the prices for those of you who aren't super brand conscious about what pills you take. Oh wow, did you see Gerald still takes Viagra? That's the Nike of the boner pill world. Now this is where things get weird for me as an American because, well, this doesn't really affect us. Not sure exactly why Speaker Pelosi was planning on dying on this hill. Remember, this sets a minimum protection period of 10 years for name brand drugs. Currently, Canada has an 8 year test data exclusivity period and Mexico has a 5 year limit, so the USMCA would force both countries to increase this period. On the other hand, in the United States, the Biologics Price Competition and Innovation Act already provides for 12 years of data exclusivity for new biologics, exceeding the minimum 10 years under the USMCA. So I guess it's cool that we're pushing against patent length in Canada and Mexico, but like, alright, want to make drugs cheaper here? Under this section, Congress could still have the conversation, so do you want to reduce patent protection periods by two years? But then who's going to fund my re-election campaign? Good point. How about we just complain about how we can't get anything done because of that darn other side? Darn you other party! So that's the pharmaceutical patent protection that got removed much to the disappointment of pharmaceutical lobbyists and literally nobody else. Now there was one other agenda item that Speaker Pelosi did concede on. In a loss for Ms. Pelosi, the pact will still contain a certain legal protection that may shield online platforms like Facebook and Twitter from some lawsuits over content posted by their users. Breaking news, big tech officially has more influence than big pharma. They had a good run. Basically, what this does is poured over American internet laws into an international trade agreement. These are two specific laws. First, a law that protects companies from lawsuits based on things their users post, except for sex trafficking and intellectual property violations. And second, a law that allows these companies to remove any posts that they personally find distasteful or objectionable without facing legal repercussions for First Amendment violations. Now, these laws have both recently come under bipartisan criticism as Facebook can't be held accountable for promoting provably false conspiracy and political theories. And at the same time, 
Facebook also cannot be held liable for censoring conservatives that they personally find distasteful. Problem is, now that these laws are going to be in an international trade agreement, if America wants to tweak them, not only are we going to have to get a change passed through our Congress, but also through Canada's and Mexico's. And boy, doesn't that just sound like a lot of work. Now to the final part of this episode, because well, it doesn't seem like the international renegotiation process is going to be that challenging. Yesterday we saw. The deal signed today is a revised version of last year's trade pact, known officially as Kuzma. Kuzma? All right, let's see if that catches on. Now we got the gang back together to re-sign off on the changes that America made to Kuzma. And nobody seemed to have any objections. As far as next steps go, Mexico is expected to ratify this agreement as soon as possible. And Canada is expected to ratify this deal in parallel with the US. So that leaves America. With Democrats and Trump shaking hands, things should all be good, right? Well, never underestimate Congress's dedication to accomplishing as little as possible. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell announced yesterday he would delay a vote on the USMCA until after the Senate holds an impeachment trial on Trump's conduct. Do we have a clip? House Democrats continue to hold up USMCA and the 176,000 new American jobs it would create. All their time and energy seems to go into House Democrats' three-year-old impeachment journey. Awesome. So of all of the international and domestic bodies, he's the last holdout on getting this treaty ratified. We'll see what happens next. At this point though, I feel like one of my first stories I followed on this show from beginning to now is about to graduate to resolve the problem. Don't worry though, I still have a Ron to look after. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing group of individuals by clicking the link in the description. Remember to subscribe because if I get a thousand of you, I can start putting up the Patreon link as an icon in this part of the video. And wouldn't that just be beautiful somewhere maybe right over here? As always, ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, Thank you for watching.